Okay, so let's begin. Last week, uh, natin hinaan tong ilaw? Last week, Ikoy talked about the need for tender love. Naalala niyo pa ba yan? Or... Yes, okay. So, any tender love? It's a love that bears all things. Diba sabi niya, it, it protects. It believes the best. It's a love that's understanding, is compassionate, and is kind. Naalala niyo pa ba yan? Yes. Okay, and we need that kind of love. You agree? Yes. Okay, we need that kind of love, especially now because we live in an increasingly hateful world. Diba? Magkamali ka lang, everyone's quick to condemn you. You agree? Yes. I love it, itong, itong section na to. Okay? Uh, and, and, you know, everywhere you go, everywhere you look, relationships are falling af- apart. 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 Okay? So people fight over the smallest of things. And because of that, dahil dun, because of that increasing wickedness and an increasing hatred sa mundo, you know, the love of most, even Christians, it, it turns cold. Nagiging cold, nagiging jaded, nagiging cynical. Okay, so ang question sa atin ngayong gabi, what about us tonight? How would you describe your heart condition? How would you describe your heart condition? Is it still tender? Or has it turned cold and jaded? Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about another aspect of love, which is the tough kind of love. Okay? And these two go together, tender love and tough love. They are opposite sides of the same coin. Okay? You can't have one without the other. Okay? Let me repeat that. You can't have one without the other. Question, what happens to a relationship if it's all love and no truth? Okay? What, what happens? Or what happens if it's all love or all truth and walang love. Here's what uh, a pastor from New York said. Sabi niya, Tim Keller, ito na. Ito na talaga. Yes! <laughs> Alright! Ayan. Ito sabi ni Timothy Keller. Sabi niya, love without truth is what? Sentimentality, emotions, just feelings. It supports and affirms us, but keeps us in denial about our flaws. Diba? Yan yung love without truth. Meanwhile, pag truth naman, without love, it's harshness. Brutal. Diba? Walang karinyo. It gives us information, but in such a way that we cannot really hear it. Kasi masyadong ang brutal. And when... Diba, when we're faced with something like a critical feedback, ano nangyayari sa atin? Automatically, diba, our guards are up. Diba, nangyayari ba yun sa inyo? And just to give you an example from my own life, uh, this is an email I received from a brother from our Bible study group. Um, this, was, this was late last year. Babasahin ko sa inyo. Okay? But just as a disclaimer, um, you know, I'm and confession rin, I'm not a naturally compassionate person. Okay? Hindi natural sa akin ang maging compassionate. And this is something that the Lord has been working in me uh, these past few years. So, you know, please be forgiving as you listen. Okay? So these are excerpts from the email, and I asked permission from him, and he, he gave his permission to share this with you tonight. Okay? Okay, here goes. Ito yung email niya sa akin. Okay, get ready to cringe. While I know you enough to know that you mean well and that you care, I just felt like there was an eagerness to speak truth and that sort of bypasses the person you're talking to. It just places an emotional hurdle that I have to process and don't really need because I am dealing with a lot already. So here are the notes I took the day after we met. Nakalimutan ko rin siya sabihin sa dami ng work. Number one, you were all geared up to preach. 
you focused in on the sin and not on the person. What I'm going through, how I am, and why I am that way. I am going through a lot, and I don't appreciate you getting in my face, asking me whether Jesus can make me victorious over sin. And you looked really angry when asking. I know the answer to that, but I know that isn't a reality for me yet. I felt like you barely acknowledged what I said and just focus on what's wrong and the implications of those wrongs. I just felt you were too eager to remind me of the other aspects, which, while important, somehow looks like you belittled my small spiritual victory. Ayun lang, bro. I know you mean well, but the overemphasis on truth can be impersonal and inconsiderate at times. Smiling face. <laughs> Thanks for being open to feedback. Yeah, namatay ako nun while reading this. Okay, you know, I'd be lying if I said hindi ako nasaktan when I was reading this. Um, and I was actually tempted to defend myself and to prove that person na mali yung sinasabi niya. You know, but, but, but by God's grace, I didn't. Okay? I took this as something from the Lord that I personally have to work on. Okay? So I didn't get offended, and after much processing, you know, I was, I was sincerely thankful that it happened because it, it, it humbled me. It humbled me. So, you know, FYI, we're still friends. Don't worry. Okay, actually better now. Okay? So it goes to show that, you know, truth and love should go together. Pag hindi naramdaman ng tao yung love mo, you know, you, you know, it doesn't work that way. It won't work. Okay? So sabi ni Michael Ramsden, a professor from Oxford, sabi niya, truth doesn't exist in the absence of love. Truth doesn't exist in the absence of love. You can't separate the, tr- the two. Truth and love. Hindi mo siya may hiwalay. And what else? Modern day philosophers. Ang sabi nila, ayaw. Okay, sabi nila, if you've never known truth, and you've never known love. Okay, the black eyed peas. Okay? So tonight's topic is tough love. Ako ba nag-control nito? Or hindi? Ah, okay. Sige, props lang pala to. Alright. So the topic tonight is tough love, subtitled "Insisting on Truth in Relationships." Okay, so this was inspired from a book by Bill Hybels, a pastor from Chicago. Okay, in yung book nayon, "Who You Are When No One Is Looking." Okay, so before we continue, let's pray. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you for this message, um, Father. We pray that you would open our hearts to hear from you, and that we would see you. Tonight, um, Lord, would you be the one to speak? Because I know I am unworthy, Lord, to deliver this message. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, ang outline natin simple lang. I'm going to tell you why it's important, tough love. I'm going to share to you what is tough love and how do you do tough love. Okay, Ben? Sige. Let's start. So, why do we need tough love? Okay, why insist on truth in our relationships? Gaano ba siya ka-important? Okay, gaano ba siya ka-important? So can you imagine, can you imagine a relationship? Okay, hindi lang to romantic relationship, ah, even with your family, at work, or in ministry. Can you imagine a relationship without truth? Or where truth is compromised? How will that relationship move forward kung walang truth? Can you imagine that? Hey, uh, I spoke to an Uber. Sino dito nag Uber? Yeah. Okay, so I, I spoke to an Uber owner uh, just some weeks ago. And yung wife niya is working as a caregiver sa Hong Kong. Hey, Tapos yung, yung relatives ng wife were living with them here in the Philippines. Hey, So yung husband ito, yung Uber owner, was telling me na, he was giving these relatives shelter, clothing, food, financial help. Okay? So, yun yung ginagawa niya for these relatives sa nakatira sa kanila. So, one day, medyo na surprise siya to hear from his wife a bad report about him. 
nagaling daw dun sa mga relatives. Okay, and nagtaka siya. And so they fought about it. They argued about it. Okay? Question, if you were the wife, who would you believe? Asawa mo or relatives mo, pamilya mo? Wouldn't you want to know the truth? Ganun siya ka-importante. Ito sabi ni Dr. Ravi. Sabi niya, the fact is, truth matters. Okay, importante siya. Especially, especially when you're on the receiving end of a lie. Di ba? May gusto ba nun? Di ba? No one wants to be on the receiving end of a lie. No one wants to live in a deception, to live in a lie. Okay? So if truth is missing or compromised in your relationships, trust will be very difficult. Mahirap, mahirap establish yung trust. And without trust, how can relationships move forward? Hindi yan uunsa, hindi yan aabante. Okay? Because you're, those are the building blocks of a relationship. Love, trust, truth. Okay? So another example is from my st- story earlier. If my friend wasn't loving enough to tell me the truth, how can I grow? How can my character grow? How can I grow as a person? Hindi ko malalaman yun because I'm blinded to it. Okay? Sabi ng author ng book, si Bill Hybels, tough love is important because it leaves no room for misinterpretation. It leaves no room for confusion. Malinaw, klaro. Okay? So question ko sa atin, on a scale of 1 to 5, Pag-isipan nyo to. How important is truth in your relationships? Okay, on a scale of 1 to 5. 5, sobrang importante. 1, wala akong pakialam. Okay? Is it something you have to work on? Or wala lang? Let's think about that. Okay? Second part, what is tough love? Ito sabi ni Bill Hybels. Sabi niya, one of the best definitions of tough love I know is action for the well-being of the beloved. Action for the well-being of the beloved. You do tough love because you love the person so much and you are willing to risk the comfort level of your relationship in order to protect the other person's well-being. Okay, you're, you're willing to risk. Kasi may risk eh. Kasi diba, baka magalit eh. Baka masira yung relationship nyo, baka ma-damage. But you're willing to risk that. Why? Dahil mahal mo yung tao. Okay? Dahil mahal mo yung tao. And tough love cannot stay silent. Okay? Because you're heavily invested in that relationship. And you are much concerned for the other person. Yan ang tough love. Okay? You can expect it to be hard. Hindi siya madali. Okay? And it will involve saying some hard things. Things na baka masaktan yung kausap nyo. And yun ang tough love. Tough love says, I love you too much to allow you to live like this. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng tough love. So in relationships, what are some obstacles to this tough love? Ano ba yung mga obstacles? Number one, the fear of being judged. Okay? Fear of being judged. Diba? Kung ikaw yung nagsishare ng truth, natatakot ka na baka husgahan ka ng tao. Tama? Natatakot ka na if you share truth about yourself, people are gonna gossip or slander about you behind your back. And that's a legitimate fear. Number two, ano, ano pa yung obstacles to speaking truth or to tough love? Fear of being accused as judgmental. Kung ikaw magko-confront, natatakot ka na baka sabihin sa'yo, grabe, and judgmental mo naman. Ba? That's a fear. What else? It's inconvenient. Sobra siyang awkward. Na imagine nyo ba, approaching someone to tell that person the truth? Diba? It takes hard work. Hindi siya madali. Okay? What else? What, 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 what other obstacle? It's the notion that telling truth, diba yung mindset natin, na if we tell truth, it will damage the relationship. Okay? It will have a negative effect on the relationship. And it can be taken against you. So iniisip natin, wag na lang. Kasi baka mag- Masira yung relationship namin eh. Okay ng status quo. And you know, if we look at the Filipino culture, okay, 
we are generally non-confrontational. Do you agree? Compared to Westerners, ha? Westerners, di ba, they can speak bluntly, eh. And wala silang ibig sabihin nun. Pero Filipinos, sobrang non-confrontational. Okay? We have this concept here sa Philippines, yung hiya. Alam niyo ibig sabihin ng hiya? Hindi ko alam kung ano yung English equivalent nun, eh. Pero, hindi lang siya shy, eh. But it, it's deeper than that, eh. Pero yung hiya na yun, dahil nahiya tayo, it prevents us from telling the truth or finding out the truth. You agree? And this is the problem. Ito yung problema sa atin. If we have issues in our relationships, and all relationships go through that, wala naman, wala naman relationship na walang issue, eh. Okay? If we have issues in our relationships and we don't address them, okay, we don't confront them, will the issue go away? No. It will not go away. And the longer you take, the longer it takes, the more the tension builds until it reaches a point of extreme frustration and resentment. Kasi nahiya kayo sabihin yung katotohanan. Okay? It will reach a point that you can't take it anymore. Tapos bigla ka nalang sasabog. Diba? Kasi, I've had it! Rah! Ba? Would you agree? Do you see this happening? Is this true? Yes. Table 18. Wait. Okay? So we shouldn't be surprised because this has been like this. This has been happening since the time of Adam and Eve. Okay? Let me show this. Okay? Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 to 8. And this was after they disobeyed God. Okay? This was after they disobeyed God. Okay, can we all read this? One, two, three, go. Then the eyes. So they sowed fig leaves. Then the man. Next. And they hid. Okay, so it's it's an interesting point to to point out. Uh, yung contrast, okay? Before disobeying God, so Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, they were naked and they felt no shame. They were naked and they felt no shame. And after disobeying God, okay, what happened? They started to hide. They started to cover themselves. Biglang kinailangan nilang ng clothing. Kasi the guilt and the shame caused by their disobedience made them hide. Okay? And we humans, tayo, lahat tayo dito, we have been hiding ever since. We hide from God, kahit nakita niya lahat, and we also hide from each other. Okay? Do you agree with that? Question sa atin, could it be, could it be, that the reason we shy away and suppress truth is deep down, we're afraid that when people find out the real us, they might not like us. They might not accept us. Kaya we prefer we just stay away from the truth. Kasi pag nalaman nila yung totoong us, totoong self, um, you know, baka turn off sila. Could that be the reason? I leave that to you to think about. Okay, next. How? How do we do tough love? So, ito na yung application part. Okay? Sabi ni Dr. Ravi, it's this. There is never any reason to be unkind. Okay? Never any reason to be unkind. Okay? Tough love doesn't mean demanding. Okay? It doesn't mean controlling. Na kailangan ikaw masunod. It doesn't mean insensitive. Okay? It doesn't mean demanding, controlling, or being insensitive. And oftentimes, you know, we will be confronted with this response when we apply this to others. Anong sabi nila? Usually, don't judge me. Tama? I'm not a book. Or only God can't judge me. Tama? Or what else? Why are you judging me? Di ba sabi sa Bible nyo, 
do not judge. Tama? Diba? So it's, it's an interesting um, statement. It's interesting to note that, you know, even people who don't believe in God or who don't believe in the Bible, they often quote this verse. Tama? Okay. So many in- misinterpret this verse to mean you can't tell someone what she or he is doing is wrong. Okay, that's, that's how they understand it. Na bawal mo sabihin sa ibang tao, mali siya. Okay? Um, ang, ibig, ang ibig nilang sabihin is you can't give a negative evaluation. Yun ang ibig sabihin nila na do not judge. Pero yun ba yung ibig sabihin ng verse? Okay? Yun ba yung ibig sabihin ng verse? Let's look at the verse. Okay? Consider this. Jesus also said these things. And he was talking to the Pharisees. Sabi niya, you hypocrites. You blind guides. You whitewashed tombs. Deep inside, you are full of greed and self-indulgence. Okay? Sasakit nun. And at the Sermon of the Mount, sabi niya sa mga naikinig sa kanya, Watch out for false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. Okay? So he couldn't, you know, Jesus couldn't possibly mean not to be discerning of right and wrong, or true and false, or righteousness and wickedness. Hindi yun yung ibig sabihin ni Jesus. So what does do not judge mean? Okay, what does do not judge mean? Ito mo sabi niya dito, Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Okay? So let's look at the word judge in this context. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? The idea is to condemn someone. Okay? Makinig kayo dito. The idea is to condemn someone. It reveals, okay, or it portrays a spirit of harshness that should never be expressed to a person. Okay? A spirit of harshness that should never be expressed to a, to a person. It's like saying, you are the judge. Okay? And you get to decide who will live and who will not live. Yun ang ibig sabihin niya dito. We are not to play that judge. Kasi sino yung judge na yun? Sino yung judge na yun? It is God. Yes. So you, you can express tough love to a person. You can confront someone with the truth without being condemning, judgmental, and harsh. Ngayon narinig yun? You can express or you can confront truth okay, without being condemning, judgmental, and harsh. Just make sure that in doing so, that your motive is not to damage the person. Intindihan nyo? Okay, not to damage the person. God is the ultimate judge. And you can write this down. James chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. Wala na on time to unpack this. Romans 14, verses 10 to 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Romans chapter 2, verse 6 and 16. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. You will see there who is the ultimate judge. And hindi tayo yun. Ito yung sabi ni Martin Lloyd-Jones. What is this spirit that condemns? Ano ba tong spirit na to? It is a self-righteous spirit. Alam niyo yung ibig ng self-righteous? Self is always at the back of it. And it is always a manifestation of self-righteousness. A feeling of superiority. A feeling that we are all right while others are not. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng self-righteousness. You're placing yourself morally superior than others. And you have that spirit of harshness. And you're telling them, mali ginagawa mo, dapat ganito. Okay? It stems from self. It is a self-righteous spirit. Yun ang sinasabi ni Jesus na wag natin gawin. Okay? But he's not saying, do not 
you know, do not discern between right or wrong or do not tell someone that he's wrong. Okay? We make sure that when we do tough love to a person, okay, make sure that your motive is out of love. Make sure that your motive is to protect. Okay? And not just to prove yourself right and do damage to that person. Let's continue. Matthew chapter 3. Uh, Matthew uh, 7 verses 3 to 5. Tabini Jesus. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your, out of your eye when all this time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Okay? So Jesus continues that when we confront someone with truth, we make sure that our hearts are right with God. Okay? Before you tell others about their wrong, yung speck, which is a small thing, okay? we make sure that we are also seeing the planks, which is bigger than a speck. Yung speck, parang patak lang yun. Eh. Mas maliit pa nga yata yun. Yung, yung speck sa patak. Okay? So make sure that we are also seeing the planks in our own life. Okay? So we deal with that first before we are able to see clearly uh, with the mistakes of others. What this means is when you approach a person, you're not saying, I'm morally superior than you. Okay? You're not saying that. You're saying, Tain dalawa, we both need help. Tain dalawa, we both need the Lord. We both need forgiveness. We both need grace, His grace. You say, apart from that, I don't know how. That's what you're saying when you're approaching someone in truth and in love. And to keep silent, okay, to keep silent and allow the person to go on a path that he or she will later on regret is not loving at all. When you see a relative or a close friend or a loved one, he's going to a path that he will later on regret. If you keep quiet, is that loving? Is that loving? Pag makita mo yung siguro younger brother nyo, five, six, seven year old, alam mong if he does something, mapapasama siya, do you keep silent? At sinasabi ba ng bata, don't judge me. Hindi ganun, di ba? In fact, when we keep silent, it is hatred. It is cowardly. If you remain silent and nakita niyo yung mali, that's the ultimate hatred and cowardice. Okay? So again, let me um, stress this again. Make sure, make sure, okay? Make sure that when you tell someone his or her wrong or his or her mistake, now that person feels your love. Kailangan maramdaman ng taong yun. Okay? If you're approaching someone to tell that person truth, that person has to feel your love. Paano nyo malalaman? How can you tell? One test is, if you're also feeling the weight of what you are to deliver. You are feeling the weight, you are feeling the potential hurt of what you're about to say. Pero kailangan sabihin. That's one way to tell. Okay? So now we move on to the practical reminders when you confront someone with truth. Number one, pray. Okay? Pray. Bakit? Because we cannot change people. We cannot change people. We can't even change ourselves. Sa atin palang hirap ne. Let's leave the changing of hearts to the Lord. Let's trust the Lord. Number two, prepare. Okay? 
think about the issue in your relationship. Yung issue na yon, that's causing the tension. Is it something you can overlook? Or is it something that needs to be dealt with? Kung hindi, lalala. Okay? Okay, but most of all, prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. Make sure that you are doing this out of love. That you want to protect the well-being of that person. Lastly, proceed. Okay, pag nakapray na kayo, nakaprepare na kayo, yung puso nyo tama na, then you proceed. Set a specific time and place to meet. Okay? And do not, okay, wag yung gagawin to as much as possible. Do not do this through email, social media, or text messaging. Okay? Best if it's done in person. Okay? I repeat, do not do this. Do not do this. Okay? Through email, social media, or text messaging. Bakit? Because it leaves room for misinterpretation. It leaves room for confusion. Pwede kang ma-misinterpret. Hindi nakikita yung facial reaction mo. Hindi nakikita yung facial expression mo. Hindi nakikita yung sincerity. Hindi nakikita yung weight. Hindi nakikita yung pagmamahal. So do this in person, kahit na mahirap. Okay? So now, what is the result of tough love. Okay, what is the result of this tough love? So I invited a brother to share his story okay, of how tough love made a significant impact in his life. Everyone, let's, let's welcome our brother, Clude Pasqua. Hello, hello. Ayon, yun. Can I go up? Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> this is hard. Tough love, bro. Tough love. Anyway, uh, Clevy asked me to give a shor very short testimony. So, siguro start ko lang with Proverbs 27.6. Sabi niya, wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. So, I just give a short story of uh, Clevy's lesson about tough love. You know, uh, I, uh, by the way, I'm Clued and I'm under Ecoy's group, and Clevy's one of my brother in the group, and I'm a data analyst. And I've been, I've committed my life to Jesus since 2007. So, your journey with Jesus has been so great for that past seven or eight years, and. Historico is, I, I always prayed for, for a partner in life, you know, um, like a girlfriend. And God has been faithful that he has given me a girlfriend, okay? And, um, but, when, when I was praying about it, I never, um, I never ever expected that I would have this big problem in my relationship with my girlfriend. So, um... Me and my girlfriend, we we uh, we went beyond borders. We we didn't went all the way, but we went beyond the borders. We had impurity issues, and at that time, um, I was leading um, a ministry. I, I also lead my own group, and um, God has convicted me of that sin for the past two years. And then, syempre, sinabi ko kay Clevy, and I thought that he would not say it to anyone. So, when, 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 when um, sorry, bro. Pero this is the truth, no? I, I told it to him because I was convicted. Ang bigat, ang feeling, eh. You, may mali, eh. I mean, prayer ministry pa yung nililid mo, tapos gumagawa ng kalokohan. And then, I told Clevy about it. And then, Clevy, I thought he would like say, bro, let's pray. You know, God forgives you. Just don't do it again. But what he did, bro, ano ginagawa mo kalukuhan? Sabi niya. And then, sinabi mo na ba kay Iko yan? Blah, blah, blah. And then he, he forced me, well, not really forced, but he, he really pushed me to tell Ikoy, um, 
the issue that I have with my girlfriend. Okay, and so that is tough. And and so with 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 Clevy's um, confrontation, I talked to Ikoy uh, the next day. And and, and when I, I've talked to him, I thought it's going to be easy. And so I talked to Ikoy about the issue, and then um, you know Ikoy's face is like when you when you're gonna when you meet him, he's smiling. But when I told the issue, he's like. He went like that. He was serious and I was like, oh my Lord, kill me now. <laughs> Sorry, we'll get it. Pero he, he, they, they both confronted me of, of my issue. Um, they, they, they really said strong words that hurt me. And I really felt at that time unloved. Because at that time, I was really struggling with this sin. And after they did that, not only them, but some of my um, within my group, like um, Jamil. Jamil is my junior Holy Spirit. He always reminds me na, hey bro, bro, you're gonna, you're, you're, not, you're a leader, you're a leader, something like that, you know. And then, ah, yan, bro, okay, love and love. Anyway, and then, 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 they told me that this went on for two years, okay? This isn't easy, it was two years. Uh, ayoko na nga silang makita. Okay, because when I, when I see them, they're going to confront me and I'm going to tell them the issue. And for two years, I didn't know how I survived that two years. I always go to the group and then I'm going to share my issue. Of course, some, there are some who are going to be loving, you know, and then some, like Clev, are going to be tough and, and they're going to say the truth. And it really hurt. And, but... You know, God used them, God used them to really break me and make me closer to God. Because without them telling me the truth, I wouldn't shape up. I wouldn't really, uh, they, they were not just telling um, the truth, but they were praying for me every time we meet. So, by that time, you know, it was just this year actually that, that I came into a realization how God loves me so much, how faithful he is, that he used my brothers to confront me of my sin and to bring me back to him. So the Lord was faithful and they were tough on me and it really took two years. And I'm really thankful to God that, that they told me that what I'm doing, I should stop doing because it's not honoring to the Lord and you've already been... Um, You've, God has already forgiven your sins, but do not take for granted God's goodness and grace to you. You may keep on doing that, but the consequences is going to be fatal. Siyempre, natakot ako. So, by, by God's grace, you know, I, um, I've repented from that sin, but of course, I, we, we both still need prayers from it. And the lesson I learned there is, you know, when you keep a sin like that, especially sexual sin, it will draw you far away from God. But what also encouraged me is that God loves us so much that he was so faithful that through his discipline, through his tough love, through my uh, group of brothers who helped me, they, they encouraged me to come back to Jesus and not to run away. So I just want to thank, again, Ikoy, Clevy, um, Bim, Jamil, my, my group of brothers here who showed me grace and truth, grace and love uh, for the past years. And thank you for, I want to thank also Jesus in front of everyone because it was all possible because of Jesus. And without him and by his spirit living in me, I, I don't think I would be here standing and and him using this mistake for his glory alone. Thanks. Uh, so thanks, uh, Clue. Thanks for sharing that. I I know that wasn't easy to share, um, and I know that you're able to share that because of the grace of God in your life. 
Um, you, do you want to hear truth? You know, no one, us, no one of us here, volunteers, you know, you look at us as leaders, no one of us here are clean. Okay? We all have done foolish and shameful things in the past, and even now, we still sin and commit, you know, stupid mistakes. And, you know, the, the only reason that um, we're able to share this with you and we're not ashamed to share our mistakes and our sins and be vulnerable and be open to you guys is because of the cross of Christ. You know, at the cross, all past, present, future, all our sins have been paid for. Uh, you can't add anything to it. You can't subtract anything to it. That is the ultimate package for us to be cleansed of sin. And that is the only reason why we're able to stand here and share this message with you guys. It's by the grace of God, something we truly do not deserve. Okay, so as, as a final word, you know, in, in Clued's story, hindi na detail masyado, but it's not instant. You know, when we were talking to him, and it pains us to do that, um, it, it, took a it took a while. Okay? It took a while. And you know, in your relationships, when you confront someone, most of the time, you will see that relationship get worse before it gets better. Okay? It will get worse before it gets better. So I encourage everyone to be patient with the process. Be patient with the process. Continue praying, continue loving, continue caring, and continue trusting the Lord for the outcome. Hey, let's pray.